Hey everyone, just want to do my Tuesday Q&A. I do these every Tuesday. Post your questions below and then I'll answer them in the next one. There is an FAQ section on my website. Be sure to check that out first before posting your questions. There's a link in the description below. Let's get started, guys. We have a lot of questions to go over this week. The first one comes from Bromega 3.0. He says, deadhead, question mark, in reference to the Grateful Dead, asking me if I'm a Grateful Dead fan. I am definitely a Grateful Dead fan. I don't know if I could classify myself as, like, a true deadhead, though. That's a... Uh, I don't know. That's 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 a that's a lot. I, I'm not. I I never been to like any like the cover bands or any of those crazy shows. Maybe like once before, like a small cover band, but I've never been to any of the big ones. So I, I I can't really say that I'm a deadhead. But I do really like the Grateful Dead. I also really like Fish as well. I've been to quite a few Fish shows and like them as well. Adam Hasner's. Hey Nate, I love your videos. Uh, thank you. My question is: Does the heat in your car affect you, especially at night when you're trying to sleep? I plan on living in my car in Vegas, and it gets really hot there even at night. Yeah, Vegas is tough I, I i went through vegas back in may and i remember intentionally not staying there at night trying to get further towards california just because i knew it would be a little bit cooler but yeah it, it can, that can be tough i know that it's doable people do it what i would do is probably just crack a you know crack open the the sunroof here and then the little front windows up there have the little rain guard so i can put them down just a little bit and then run a fan and just kind of get airflow through here and it would probably work but I can imagine that it would be pretty uncomfortable. I know people do it, though. They definitely do it. Even in the summertime over there, they'll stay there and, and make it work. Uh, so it's doable, but I, I don't know if I, I think I would avoid it if I, you know, at all costs for the most part. Susan Marie, hey, Nate, uh, have you surfed at night before? That's a good question. I, I have definitely a couple of times before i think in pensacola once i wasn't i didn't like intentionally paddle out at night but we were out and then the sun went down and we just stayed out and surfed until like 10 p.m and it was a lot of fun i've probably done it back at some, one of my home breaks too back in uh, rhode island as well but i don't think i ever have over here i know you say that you've, you've heard of people doing it in malibu i know and I, i'm pretty sure people do it at trestles a lot as well like late they'll go out at like midnight and stuff like that when the moon is really bright and they can they can go out there and have a good time but i've never done it out here at least not out west roadside rick wonder how big your power setup is and if you ever have problems with the lead acid setup since you can't really use them past 50 percent so i have agm uh, sealed lead acid batteries i i think they can go past 50 percent but i try not to let them go past it and i know that the fridge cuts off once it gets below 50 percent anyway so i pretty much can't really get past it so but yeah i mean my power setup isn't really the biggest size it's really not perfect i'd like to upgrade to something bigger maybe like a 100 amp hour battery but right now i just have a 35 amp hour battery that's aging and is ready to be replaced it's definitely on the agenda at some point for the near future paul harsh i'm a huge fan of yours i'm from vermont and i, I see you're up in the Killington shirt. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, lo I love that Killington shirt. It's starting to get old. I might need to get a new one at some point, but I am uh, really curious about how to start the minimalist lifestyle. Just uh, throw away and give everything away. Maybe a video on what you really need and what you don't need. I do want to do, I've been talking about this a lot, like for weeks and weeks, but I do want to do a video about what I, you know, going through the stuff that I have and talking about why I think I need it and why it's important to me and to my life and stuff like that. But yeah, in terms of starting minimalism, I mean, that's basically it. Throwing everything away, selling as much as you can, trying to get as much money for it as you can, and then saving that or putting it towards whatever you're, whatever else you're trying to do. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's not easy to do. Even when I did this, I didn't really have that much stuff. I had, like, a couple of guitars. I had a piano. I had some, you know, posters and, like, stuff like that. But, you know, a bed, a fridge, all the basic stuff. But I didn't have as much as somebody who's like been living in a house for 20 or 30 years might have. So it's definitely a process. It took me a while to do it and to finally get rid of everything. But slowly but surely, I started putting things on Craigslist and started listing things and started selling them and then kind of went on from there. But it did take a little bit of time. Renegade Bastard, how do you go about storing over-the-counter medicines and prescription medication in your vehicle? Would the higher temps in the vehicle cause an issue and potentially compromise the medication? That's actually a really good question. Uh, I just keep everything in like a little plastic Tupperware container thing that I have and I don't really store too many you know too many medicines or anything like that it's mostly just like ibuprofen and then NyQuil and DayQuil if I get like a cold or something like that and that's pretty much it I don't really have too much maybe some Tylenol but yeah I, if I need to I try not to get like the bigger packages of it so they're not just like sitting in there you know if, if I get the smallest package that I can at the time and that way I don't have too many left over because I'm sure that the heat is not good for it it's definitely probably not good for things like sunscreen or like aloe or anything like that and probably not it's probably even worse for prescription medication too but i just do the best that i can with it and so far it seems to have worked out okay 
Sarah, oh Sarah, I also want to live the van life and I'm pursuing a business degree specializing in Spanish international. How come you have not done anything with it? Is it not worth it? It's tough for me to say whether or not international relations was worth it. I mean, I was always very passionate about foreign culture and foreign language. So studying that and, and getting the chance to study that throughout college was something that I really enjoyed. But overall, I mean, if I were to get a job in that, I'd probably have to work for like the state, you know, the Department of State or like the FBI or the CIA or something like that. All of those positions would make me make my home base Washington, D.C., which is not really what I want to do. I mean, it's it's a cool city to visit. It's, I love going there, but I would not want to live there full time. It's too far from the ocean. And then I'd also have to probably travel internationally a lot, spend a lot of time in foreign countries, but I wouldn't really be able to choose where I'm going to. I would just have to go there. And so that's kind of why I haven't, haven't really followed up with that. I'd, I'd rather just keep trying to build a business on my own and, and keep going that way. But I mean, at some point, it wouldn't be the worst thing to do. I think I would also really enjoy it as well. Utah Tanak Ten Tenkara, Utah Tenkara, would you consider heading over and boondocking in Silicon Valley so we can see if it is possible to live like you do in the most expensive city in the world? That's that's interesting. Yeah, I, I've been over to San Francisco once before, and I remember I spent one night, and I was in a very wealthy residential neighborhood, like right in front of a bunch of mansions, and it worked out okay. I just boondocked right there, and then I just kind of moved on. It seems like there are a lot of people around there living in RVs and vans similar to in San, in San Diego, and then even in Silicon Valley, I want to say I've heard stories of people converting camper vans and converting their cars and box trucks and stuff like that and just living out of them even when they have full-time tech jobs simply because rent is just too expensive to afford even on a full-time salary so it seems like it's definitely doable I, I'm really excited to go back to that area though in San Francisco and spend some more time there and hoping to get the chance to do that later on this summer Mike V hi Nate I'm very inspired by your videos uh, thank you I got tired of paying rent don't have money for a van so I'm starting to uh, convert my Chevy Cavalier. <laughs> That's awesome. Right on. Uh, would you consider coming up to Manitoba, Canada when you're in North Dakota for the sugar beet harvest? Last year when I was there, I remember wanting to go up to Winnipeg and just not getting the chance because my passport had actually expired like a few days before I left on the whole trip up to the Northwest and then over to North Dakota. So I didn't get a chance to, but Canada is definitely on the agenda. If everything works out, as according to plan, that's where I'm going to be heading in the next few weeks. If you know, if I do decide to go on this whole road trip thing, and uh, yeah, it's it definitely it definitely on the radar. I don't know if I'll make it to Winnipeg this time around, but I definitely want to check out at least Ontario and Quebec, and then at some point next summer, do an entire road trip across all of Canada and check everything out. Swifty with Fragile X, have you considered taking Antine to wine country in the Finger Lakes? It's quiet. I think you mean the Finger Lakes in, in New York. I had to look it up to make sure that, that I was thinking of the same place, but I, I figure there's probably a lot of places called the Finger Lakes, but if it is the one in upstate New York that looks like a really beautiful area, I don't know too much about it, and I haven't really thought about going over there, but at some point, maybe in the future, that will be on the agenda. We'll have to, we'll have to add it to the list. Jason, relaxation. Have you ever thought of coming to Canada if you win the lottery and could buy one van or coach which would you choose that's a good question i, I don't really know I, I feel like i would probably choose like a like a pretty new uh i don't know like like a cargo van with a high top and then the materials to convert it myself i just think that would be more economical at the same time though i do like the road treks a lot it's just i feel like they have so many features in them that it's almost overwhelming and you can't really kind of make it your own i think i would rather just make it my own in the best way that i could but yeah i do like the road treks i think that they're you know they're pretty solid some of like the, like the road trek 190 some of the uh some of the newer ones especially are, are pretty cool but yeah i'm not really 100 percent sure it would definitely be a class b though definitely would be a class b van or a high top conversion van and then about coming to canada yes canada is on the agenda i'm hoping that i'll get the chance to be up there at some point later this year no pro go pronto question if you get a larger van obviously it won't be an element would you change their channel name to the make or model of the new vehicle or something completely different i think that i would probably keep it element van life and then just change the logo to something more elemental i don't know like like a wave or a mountain or a raindrop or i don't know something like that but i haven't really thought about it just yet i'm not 100 percent sure what what's going to happen but i could change it to something completely random or just keep it element van life and just try to change the logo and make a few changes here and there and go from there. There'll always be that foundation. You know, why is it called element van life? Well, because I started out in Honda Element. 
Blaine Taylor, have you thought about e-camper conversion from, from Ursa Minor vehicles? Yeah, I have thought about the e-camper conversion. They are really awesome, but they're also like $6,000, so it's not something that I'm planning to do anytime soon. No fate 247 does your girlfriend know you don't want a family? I know there are a lot of comments, and, and people are very curious about this. Yes, she, she does know that I don't want a family. It was actually her who brought up the fact that she doesn't want children before I even said anything when we first started dating. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's something that we've talked about quite a bit and it doesn't seem like a family is in the cards for us, at least not, not in the near future. Susan Dodson, hey Nate, I uh, love your channel. I lived in a van 15 years ago and it wasn't a big, it went, when it wasn't a big thing, my family, my favorite place was in Ocean Beach. Have you ate at Ho Dad's? Yeah, Ocean Beach is really awesome. I've walked by Ho Dad's so many times on that strip there, just kind of hanging out and stuff, but I've never, uh, I've never actually eaten there yet. I still haven't tried it yet. It's a famous hamburger place in Ocean Beach though, for those of you who don't know what it is. And I'd like to try it at some point i just haven't had a chance to luana lee cano have you ever listened to the ventures or to uh manheim steamrollers i can't say i have i don't even really recognize those names but we'll have to add it to the list and check it out ashley dylan hey nate i love your love your videos and your attitude on life i thank you do you do you see yourself staying in the element now that you're talking about your girlfriend joining you in a bit or are you considering an upgrade if an upgrade what would you get so the upgrade is more than likely going to be like a high top chevy van like an older chevy van a cargo van and then we'll either add a high top or you know find one with the high top already and then convert it ourselves but that's something that's you know in the cards at some point but not really 100 percent sure when it's probably not going to be for a while and then jake weisenberg has the last question here how are you doing this summer finding places to sleep etc in san diego so so far it's been okay you know last year i spent the year here as well so i kind of know most of san diego pretty well i've gotten to know especially the pacific beach and ocean beach areas really well so yeah for the most part i haven't really had too many issues you know it seems like there's a lot of folks in vans and rvs out here doing the exact same thing that i'm doing so it works out pretty well that sums it up for all the questions this week guys thanks for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll talk to you all in the next video